What's going on, everybody? It is January 8th, Monday, and I am back, and I am ready to play some, some DFS. Took the past two nights off. Uh, yesterday, just, you know, four games slate. Just wanted to watch some football. Today, I am diving in hardcore. We've got eight games. They're okay. Um, there's a little bit of value out there right now hoping to clear that up a little bit more with some later news but let's just dive in first game up is pacers hosting the bucks uh pacers 107.75 implied total which is ninth um and then right off the bat i think that victor oladipo looks okay um i'm, I'm gonna want to look a little bit further there i'm assuming Boyan plays um, I don't have a terribly large amount of interest there. I don't really have a ton of interest anywhere here outside of Old Depot, and even that needs to be taken with a little bit of a um, grain of salt because we don't necessarily know how many minutes he's going to play. So Old Depot is 9,400 on Fanduel, 8,600 on DK which is kind of interesting. Um, that $9,400 price tag is a little prohibitive on an eight-game slate if you're concerned about his minutes. You know, granted, he went uh, ham sandwich in his return, 57.7 fantasy points in 24 minutes. I know he had a bundle of blocks or steals or something along those lines. Um... Yeah, I don't, like, nobody else really jumps off the page. I guess Sabonis, if you believe that his increased minutes are real, is not a bad look. Um, he's played 27, he played 27 in the last one, 33 in the game before that, 29 in the game before that, 28 in the game before that. So I have him in right now at 27 minutes, and at 5,300 on DK, I think that's a pretty decent salary. Um, so I'm going to add Oladipo first, and it's not something I'm super wild about, but he's, I like the matchup for him. And then Sabonis, I think is in a pretty good spot. I can't type this morning. Demontes, yeah, I got that. But should have the ability to get a bunch of buckets, you know, on the interior. Yeah, I, I'm perfectly okay with that. I don't see anything else further down. I don't really want to mess with Boyan or Corey Joseph. So now we'll head to the Bucks. Bucks 106.25 implied total, which would be 10th. <clears throat> and I will be going live tonight, uh, probably right at 6. Could be a little earlier, we'll see. Um, but we're definitely doing a live before lock tonight. And most likely every single day this week. Okay, bucks, bucks, bucks. Middleton is the only one I want to slightly pump the brakes on. But I like a lot of the bucks tonight. So Giannis, 11-1 on FanDuel, 10-9 on DK. Uh, needs, you know, 55-plus... Finally had a big game uh, in this most recent game they played, um, what is that, Saturday night. Uh, been a while since he had a 60-pointer, so hopefully that's a sign of things to come. How do I feel about Giannis against the Pacers? I feel like he probably does really well against the Pacers. Fifty-seven and a half earlier this year, a couple days ago, twenty-nine minutes. 
I don't expect to end up with any Giannis. But, oh, I spelled it wrong. I don't usually spell it wrong. Dante to Kumpo. That time I got it. All right, Bledsoe now. 7,500 on FanDuel. 7,200 on DK. I can get behind a little bit of Bledsoe. Um, okay, has he had any 40 point game? Yeah, he went for 40 in the most recent one. Two stinkers before that, a 40, a stinker, a couple 30s. I like Bledsoe there. Chris Middleton, 7,400 on FanDuel, 6,900 on DK. I don't totally love this matchup for him. But I think the price is kind of good. I want to. I'm assuming it's been. It's down a couple hundred bucks. Yeah, I mean, you know, a week plus ago he was in the mid sevens, one random eighty four hundred dollar game. So yeah, uh, I don't mind having a you know a lineup or two with him, but. It won't be overexposure. And then finally, without any shock here for me, Brogdon, 5,200 on FanDuel, 4,800 on DK. And, you know, I just I just like him at that salary as filler. He'll shoot the ball. You know, he rarely craters. 25, 25, 25, 25, 22, 25, 33, 32, like, you know, sometimes it's just good to get the points in the lineup. I don't have any interest in Thon, I don't think. Has he been playing better? I mean, he's, he's boom bust lately hasn't been very good this year from a fantasy perspective so i'm going to pass next up we have the nets um of brooklyn hosting the toronto raptors raptors are seven and a half point favorites at brooklyn which makes me want to move that spurs line that i have let me do that right now the spurs kings line wasn't out yet but they should be if the Raptors are seven and a half point favorites in Brooklyn. I need to move that line. Let me just make sure I didn't read that wrong. Nope, that's right. Okay. So that line needs to be more like five. Uh, either way, it's not going to make a difference. Okay. Anyway, Nets and Raptors. Nets, big underdogs. 11th in implied total. Um... It's the Raptors we're going to want to look at, but got to look at the Nets first. Uh, no Levert? Or am I wrong here? What am I thinking? Somebody's out. No uh, Damari Carroll. My bad. Levert should be fine. <laughs> uh, Damari Carroll is out, however. I knew somebody on the wing was out. Oh boy, okay. So we want to look at Rondé Hollis Jefferson a lot. Well, not a lot, but like a fair amount. I have a little concern about, I don't want any part of Crab. I, well, I have no problem with Dinwiddie. I'll go all the way down to Levert though. So, Dinwiddie is 6,000 on FanDuel, 6,100 on DK. Wow, that's, man, that's crazy. So, uh, my projection system, the column that would be labeled EPS in here, um, is the same sort of system that you would see on my website. Uh, it's the one that I cloned basically from the simple projection system that's on 
basketball reference. Um, that's this is just the bare bones. This is sort of regressed player stats projected out for today. That has him at thirty one point two. Fantasy Cruncher has him at thirty one point seven. I always like to have another set of something in there just to make sure that you know everything seems to be calibrated correctly. And his twenty seventeen twenty eighteen so this season's weighted fantasy points per minute so. <clears throat> uh, Games that were happened in October don't count as much. You know, yesterday counts the most. Um, but his per minute weighted stats have 31 points as well. So all three projection systems have him in the 31 range. And at that price, um, that's actually a pretty decent value. So while I don't necessarily love the matchup... Um, I guess his salary, and he's had like an uptick in minutes recently too. But just looking at his salary, I'm assuming it's, yeah, so he was up in the mid sixes a week plus ago. Those extra couple hundred dollars are, are pivotal, especially for a guy who, <clears throat> he played 36 plus minutes in the last two games, so even that's trending in the correct direction. I'm willing to take a look at Spencer Dinwiddie. I wish that that was slightly better game, but <clears throat> like I wish they weren't playing the Raptors. I wish they were playing like the Pistons or you know the Pacers, so that total would be a little bit closer. Actually, I like Dinwiddie as a two just because of that price. All right, Rondé Hollis Jefferson. <clears throat> Sorry, guys. <clears throat> Rondé Hollis Jefferson, 6,900 on FanDuel, 5,800 on DK. I can't clear my throat. I don't have any water. <clears throat> better? Better. Um, that $5,800 price tag on DK is exceptional. Um, $6,900 price tag on the other hand, not so much. Rondé Hollis Jefferson. Matchup looks good. He gets to the rim basically more than anybody else on the team, which is great. Doesn't shoot that many threes, which in this particular instance is great because uh, the Raptors tend to limit that. Um, we need him to get to... You know, mid thirties. <laughs> Hasn't done it in the last three, but had three straight in the low to mid thirties. I'm comfortable with it. I love the price. Um, to me, he's a two on DraftKings. Now he's a three on DraftKings. Two on DraftKings. Four on FanDuel. I really don't like that price. Seven thousand for him is is a lot. Uh, next up, Karis LeVert, sixty one hundred on FanDuel, fifty two hundred on DK. I don't totally love it, but that price is just insane. He only needs to get to thirty. Missed the last two games, but before that, you know, four straight in the thirties. With the assumption that he plays, um, I don't see any reason not to have some Karis LeVert. Did his price tank? Yeah, so he's down. He's been playing pretty well. Obviously, those four straight high 30s games, up to 57. Yeah, he's expected to be on the court on Monday. Um, he was up to 57 after playing well, and now back down to 52. So I'm comfortable with that. Um, also a two to me. I won't have an overwhelming amount. Of, I know I'm spending a lot of time on Brooklyn here, but their prices have just shifted in a way that makes them advantageous. I won't have a ton of Brooklyn, but I'm going to have a decent chunk of these individual guys. Um, Crab is 4,800 and 4,700. I just don't like the way that he's playing. Um, 
So he's the one that I'm not going to focus on, I guess. He should be going off accordingly. And then Joe Harris, the one that's going to benefit the most from the Damari Carroll news. He is 3,700 on FanDuel and 4,200 on DK. Um, I'm fine with Joe Harris as a punt play. He's not one I want to seek out, but he makes for good filler at that salary. And I don't really have any interest in Stauskas. Whew, that was a lot of time on the Nets. But it was relevant, or at least it needed to be relevant. I can, I probably have the ability to make things way more irrelevant. Raptors now. I'm actually going to sneakily like this game as a snack. Snack. Stack. Although uh, it's probably not that sneaky. Okay, so uh, love, 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 love DeMar here. Um, he might end up being like my favorite play on the board. I'm excited to take a deeper look at this. Not crazy about Lowry. I'm interested in Surge. I don't know if I'll go to anybody else just because of minutes. But I think, as you guys know, for all of the listeners out there, um, you know that I'm a big DeMar DeRozan fan, and um, I will rarely, if ever, fade him, um, particularly on days where he scores 50-plus uh, fantasy, or 70-plus fantasy points. Uh, I would never fade him in that scenario. But he looks amazing tonight. 9,100 on FanDuel, 8,800 on DK. Um, I love this matchup for him. Uh, and he, for me, he's a tier one guy. He's a guy that I want to have in a lot of my lineup. So this is going to be the reverse DeMar DeRozan fade game. I'm going to load up on DeMar DeRozan, and my dude is going to go two for 24 from the field or something stupid. <sighs> Here it comes. All right. Kyle Lowry, 7,900 on FanDuel, 7,600 on DK. I don't mind having some of him because they have such a high implied total, and his salary isn't exactly a bad value. I just like DeRozan that much more. And then Surge, 5,900 on FanDuel, 5,700 on DK. Um, I like that price a lot. How has he been playing? We need him to get the 30 plus. You know, he's been there in those last three. Um, I like Surge a, a solid amount. I really like this game. I need to think about... Um, like the way this game plays out and if it plays out with the Raptors being ahead sort of what that means for uh, the Nets and sort of working in all of those guys that I've added to this short list I can't go with Jonas um, it scares me a little bit to look at DeLon Wright but the way he's been playing if he happens to get that minutes boost because you know, sometimes he gets to 29 or 30 minutes. I, I have him at 22 right now. He's 4,800 on FanDuel and 4,500 on DK. I don't, you know, that's kind of a prohibitive price, in my opinion, for him. But on the off chance that he gets minutes, like, I don't think that it's a huge problem to have him in a lineup. Okay, we're off to the Bulls now. Uh, Chicago hosting the Houston Rockets. They are five-point underdogs at home. Uh, Rockets have the second-highest implied total, so that'll be a little bit interesting. I know the Bulls' defense has been pretty good, um, particularly since Miritich has come back, oddly enough. So I'm anxious to see how this looks. Um...
I'm gonna have to look at Holiday and Dunn. Although I don't love Holiday. We'll look at Markin and Dad. I'm, they're all sort of in play, oddly enough. I don't like the Bulls. It's just, I'm not a fan. Dunn is 7,500 on FanDuel, 6,800 on DK. We need him to get to like the 38 plus area. He's had two not so awesome games lately, but mid 30s or higher in the other three. Um, you know, while he would be dealing with Chris Paul, that's they don't really have much else. And done not necessarily much as much of a scorer so I'm okay with done um, I did like him a lot what night was that uh, the fifth so was that Friday night seven six. yeah Friday night I did like him a lot I had a, a real sizable chunk of Chris Dunn um, so I'm hoping that I'm seeing the same thing that I saw last week or Friday it's a really good matchup like I don't mind having Chris Paul out there. They're thin. I would imagine the Rockets' defense is struggling right now. He's a two for me. Markinen, 6,200 on FanDuel, 5,900 on DK. Has he been playing poorly? What do we need out of him? Mid to low 30s. He had three straight 30-point games here. Feels like that he would be he would fit this game to a T. Yeah, I'm fine with that. The finisher or whatever the hell else we call him. I don't like the drop down to 25 minutes there, but I think that's just a game situation. So he looks really good in this matchup. Um, yeah, I prefer Dunn, I think, just because of his price. Miritich, 6,500 on FanDuel, 5,600 on DK. I don't think he's rosterable on FanDuel at that price, but on DK, you know, you need him to get to the low to mid 30s. Hasn't done it in the last game or two. Uh, the minutes are weird. I'm going to pass there. I don't trust the minutes. Justin Holiday, though, 5,800 on FanDuel, 5,000 on DK. That's really damn good. 30 for value. Not the best in his last time out, but can get to the, the spot we need. I'm fine with Justin Holiday. He's a three for me. Um, Denzel Valentine. I don't trust the minutes, or not the minutes, I, like, I need him to get more minutes. I want to, I need him on the night he gets 31 or 34, not 27, basically. I need those couple extra ones if I want to go that direction. But, you know, he should be able to shoot threes. It's a four for me. Not Denvel Valentine. It's amazing how bad of a typer I am sometimes. That's probably as far down as I want to go. So next up, we'll take a look at the Rockets. I don't know what it is. Lately, I've been just dragging through these videos. I, I, just, I don't know if I'm just... I have more to say or what, but... I feel like I'm spending more time on each team. I guess that's not a bad thing. Rockets, 113 implied total, tied for second. Nope, just straight up second on the night. Um, Ariza and Capella both look great to me. Chris Paul is not bad, at, but that's a hell of a price tag. We'll see the rest of it. Paul is 10-2 on FanDuel 
uh, 10,000 on DK. That implied total is gigantic for them. We need Paul to get to, you know, 50 plus for sure. Has not done that in the three games without Harden. I'm a little worried there. I like the price, but I don't totally love it. I don't know. Eh. I don't know if he can get up there. I think having Harden there makes him better. Gordon is 8,000 on FanDuel. Unplayable, in my opinion. Uh, 7,000 on DK. Only slightly better. You need him to get to 40, um, which he can do, but this isn't the one, in my opinion. Which is a shame because of that total. Now, Capella, 7,400 on FanDuel, 6,600 on DK. That's a place I want to look. Um, I like Capella there in a, in a pretty big way. He needs high 30s. Um, three straight without Harden have been not the best, and he hasn't really been the best lately. I'm hoping that that $6,600 price tag is helpful for me. Uh, he's a three, though. Gerald Green, <laughs> dude is just bombing. Every time he gets a chance, a dude is just letting it sail. I commend him. He was just like, all right, you know, if I'm not going to have a job. If I come in, I'm going to let it go. 12 threes in the most recent one. You know, so, like, this is the Gerald Green performance you're expecting. 5 of 14 from the field. He shoots 33% from three and doesn't do anything else. If he's going to shoot 15 threes and make eight of them, or if he's going to go 15 of 25 from three in the two games, you just tip your hat to him and say, good day, sir. Not a game where I want Gerald Green. And then Trevor Ariza, 5,200 and 4,800. Has he been doing anything interesting? No, just low 20s. Um... I'm okay with having a little bit of Ariza. He'll pop up a lot, I'm sure. Trevor Ariza is like the Rockets version of Malcolm Brogdon in fantasy. Like, he's just kind of there. Alright, Timberwolves and Cavs. Wolves are one-point underdogs at home. That's an interesting game. Uh, the assumption is Isaiah's playing, so that should be fun. It's a game I actually want to watch. I'm sure it's on NBA TV or something stupid, and then I can't watch it. But I'd like to see this game. All right, so I'm going to take a look at Butler Towns and Wiggins, Ooh, and probably Tyus Jones, but... I don't necessarily love this. Taj is the only guy I'm not super interested in. Towns is 9,600 on FanDuel, 9,200 on DK. We need him to get to basically 50. He's been okay in the past two, obviously. Um, He's been up and down. A lot of swings in his game. I'm willing to take that swing, though. How has he been against Cleveland in the past? <laughs> Not bad. I mean, with that implied total... You know, they're fifth. That's a good game. I, I like Towns. Butler, 9700 on FanDuel. I don't I don't dig that price very much. 8400 on DK. I like it a lot more. Um, we need him to get to around 50. Mid-40s games recently. The 30.1 is the only down game of Butler. I did have a lot of Butler that particular night, unfortunately. Um... So he's more of a three for me here. 
And I wouldn't... He's probably a DK only for me. Wiggins is 6,400 and 6,000. So we're looking for, you know, mid to low 30s. Uh, he's had two 240 point games in his last four, which is big. Otherwise, he's still sort of just mired in Wiggins land. Um, maybe this is sort of like a Wiggins revenge game since he got traded from Cleveland, so to, so to speak. I'm going to bet on bet on the shots here though put him as a three as well Taj I don't necessarily love particularly on FanDuel um, Taj had like a huge game against Cleveland earlier in the year didn't he nope don't know what I'm thinking of different team Yeah, I'm going to pass on Taj, but definitely don't take him on FanDuel. <clears throat> and then Tyus Jones, 5,500 on FanDuel, 4,500 on DK. I have a hard time not looking at him on DK. He needs to get to like 25 plus. Three straight games, it's basically 16 and a half. Um, I think this is a decent game for him, though. I don't want a ton of him, but it's just a it's an all right value at 4500 on DK. And like I said, uh, he's DK only. Um that's it for Minnesota. Let's go to Cleveland now. Cavs 110.5 implied total, which is fourth. This is a really good game to stack from a uh, fantasy perspective. Well, I don't know. There's a uh, it's not like the Cavs have a lot of depth of fantasy players, but... Okay. I don't mind LeBron. I'm going to peek at JR. Other than that, everybody seems to be priced in a way that doesn't really want me to get them on my fantasy team. LeBron, 11-4 on FanDuel, 11-5 on DK. I mean, he's going to see a lot of Jimmy Butler, you would imagine. I mean, he's like a 4 for me. Clearly, he's LeBron James, and it doesn't matter, but I don't see how I get that 11-5 worked, um, worked into my lineups. Maybe once. Love is 7,400 on FanDuel, 7,500 on DK. His minutes just aren't there. And he for him to get to value at that price, it's really difficult. You know, he played 28 minutes in the last one, 21, 26. I mean, if he's not playing 30-plus at that salary, it's going to be really tricky. I don't, I don't really like it. It's a pretty good matchup for him, though, all things considered. I just don't see how he ends up in a lineup. He gets a four for the matchup, but I don't know. I'm fine with no Wade. I don't have any interest in Isaiah, who's not even showing up here. He doesn't even make it through the filter. Okay, like I feel like he should be making it through the filter. Why isn't he there? Oh yeah, he's just too expensive. So he's 6,500 on DK. The hell is he on FanDuel? 6,500 on FanDuel as well. Um, that's just it. He's too expensive right now. That's all there is to it. I don't really have any interest in anybody else in this game. Man, I don't. That concerns me. I'll have to take a deeper dive in that, but I don't really like anything on the Cleveland side right now. Go to the Pelicans, hosting the Pistons. 109 implied total for the Pels, which would be sixth. Um, the assumption is that everybody is playing for the Pistons, except for obviously Reggie Jackson. All right, Pels. Um, 
Preference is AD, but I think I like them all. And we're only really looking at three of these dudes. Cousins is 10-9 on FanDuel, 10-7 on DK. I like him. You know, we need him to get to 55 plus, which obviously he can do. Um, so I like Cousins a good bit here. I just like AD a lot more, particularly on DK. AD is 10-9 on FanDuel, so same price as Cousins, but he's 9-7 on DK, $1,000 cheaper. How has Cousins done against... Weird. How has Cousins done against the Pistons in the past? Not shabby. Nothing crazy. It makes me feel okay. So... Cousins looks great. He's a two for me. AD looks incredible for me. He's a he's a straight one for me on DK. He's a two for me on FanDuel. But either way, they look great. And then Drew is 6,800 on FanDuel. 6,400 on DK. So you only need him to get to the mid to high 30s. Um, he has that ability. And, you know, chambered in the back pocket is the ability to go off. They've got a great total. I'm going to have a lot of those three guys, particularly Anthony Davis. I'm hoping that I can do, if there's enough value out there, that I can get a few, just from what I've seen so far, obviously there's a couple more games, I'm hoping I can get a few Anthony Davis and DeMar lineups out there because I think those two are the, the two best guys for me. Um, and I, I don't think it's particularly close. And that's on DK. Just best combination of game, price, matchup, etc. Uh, Rondo at 5,500, uh, I don't trust the minutes. N not, not a bad peak in a GPP because he is the type of guy that can put up like 50 fantasy points on a random night. But and that's it there. Go to the Pistons. Pistons 103, implied total, tied for 14th. Um, nothing particularly interesting there. I'm excited to play tonight. I don't know why. I'm real jazzed about it. Okay. Not the biggest fan of Drummond here. Or Harris. I'd, you know, it's tricky to see how Stanley Johnson's minutes look when he gets back because he hadn't exactly been in favor prior to going out I don't love much here which is fine by me I'm not trying to force the Pistons Drummond 8900 on FanDuel 87 on DK um, I can't imagine paying that price I don't like the matchup this might just be a full fade of Drummond he needs to get to like 45 or higher Been in and out. You know, he had. That's a great stretch here. Those four straight games of awesome, but out, not the best game. Out is not um, super appealing. I'd rather him just be out, make it a little bit easier, but I don't want. I don't think that I'm going to have any Drummond. Um, I don't want any part of Tobias Harris. I don't necessarily need any part of ish but at 5700 on dk um he needs to get to 20 or to th like mid to low 30s which he can do um so at the very least i'd be okay with having a, a small part of ish on dk i wouldn't want to pay 6500 for it so he's dk only uh, i don't want any part of reggie bullock or anybody else on that squad so let's move on 
Sacramento Kings hosting the San Antonio Spurs. This is a made-up line. It doesn't matter. Uh, the Kings are going to have the worst implied total of the night. I have it at 98 right now, which is dead last. Spurs, I assume, are going to be without Kawhi. He's got like a shoulder thing now. Um, doesn't seem like a game they're going to play him. I don't get the sense that um, him, you know, getting 25 minutes on a Monday against the Kings is really the spot where they're going to grind him into the ground. Nope, that's supposed to be Kings. So uh, I have him out. I also have Ginobili out for a rest day. Everybody else should be playing, um, but making heads or tails of the Spurs minutes is obviously pretty difficult, so there's not too many guys we want to look at there. Um, George Hill was out last night for the birth of his child, so I assume that he'd be playing today. And uh, Zebo missed with uh, some like dental issues so I assume that he is also playing those are two very specific things that have to be wrong um, on a particular day great matchup though um, from like a shot perspective for the Kings which shouldn't surprise me the Spurs are going to give up the worst shots and they do they give, they'll let people take long mid-rangers all day You know, got to limit the amount of, of exposure to this game, I think. Willie Cauley-Stein is 6,900 on FanDuel, 6,200 on DK. Um, you need him to get to 35-ish. That's actually really not bad. Man, he bunch of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 games above 32 in his last 7. Is Willie Cauley-Stein sneaky good? Is he just hidden on the Kings? That's actually it's it's not a bad matchup for him. Uh, Zebo, I'm good. De'Aaron Fox is 5,500 on Fanduel and 4,900 on DK. Um, he's gotten huge minutes in his last two. I don't know. I'm I'm good. I don't even I don't want to have that sort of exposure. Fine on George Hill, um, and then Bogdan and Buddy Healed. Not really guys that I'm trying to flip a coin against, or to to like roster. I'll, I'm fine. Eight games. I don't need it. Spurs. Um, it, I mean it's hard to ever be confident here. The only guy. I mean, Aldridge looked great last night. I think he had a pretty huge game. Um, but if it's not one of those first three guys, it's just, it's hard. And like Aldridge and Kyle Anderson both don't exactly have the best matchup here <coughs> from a shot profile perspective. Only guys that would show up are guys that I don't necessarily want to have because I don't trust. Aldridge, 8,700 on FanDuel, 7,700 on DK. You have to have a piece of him on DK just because of that price. 54 fantasy points last night. I'm fine with him as a <clears throat> third option from your third tier guy for me. Pow, 5,600 and 5,800. Um, I, I don't need it. Kyle Anderson, 5,700 on FanDuel, 5,000 on DK. I don't like the shot profile for him, but again, he's 5,000. He should play 30 plus minutes. Uh, it's just a good value. Tony Parker on FanDuel looks pretty good, 4,000. Um, I'm comfortable adding that as a three FanDuel only. But you just don't want a lot of this game. I'm, I'm good there. Last two games, Warriors hosting the Nuggets. Warriors I have as a nine-point favorite. Nope, yep, nine-point favorite at home against the Nuggets. Um, you know, a bunch of guys are, like, questionable, probable, whatever. Uh, so everybody's in for right now. No way to tell one way or the other. grab 
the Warriors now. Durant and Draymond are the first two guys that jump off the page for me. We're only really looking at the top four. No surprise there. Curry, 9,800 on FanDuel. Looks awesome. 10-5 on DK. Looks less awesome. Defensively, the matchup is good. Um, I don't necessarily... Like, it's not jumping off the page for me for Curry. I wish that his salary looked a little bit better on DK. That's that's a tough one. Um, he's a... He's a two borderline one for me on FanDuel. Um... He's more of a three for me on DK, though. Durant, 10-4 on FanDuel, 9-6 on DK. Um, he's, he's what I wanted Curry to be. 9,600 on DK is just such an exceptional price. You need him to get to the mid-50s. Has missed the last two, obviously, but you know no issues hitting 50 or higher. Um, he's a two for me. If he hadn't missed the mo two most recent games, it'd probably be a little different. Draymond, 8,300, 8,000 on DK. I like him a lot here. We need him to get to the mid 40s. Um, obviously, when he's on the court, he has the ability to do so. Straight two, and then Clay, 6,800 and 6,600. I actually don't have any interest in Clay. So that's it for me. Now we'll move to Denver. Nugs, 104.5 implied total would be 12th. Um, I have a feeling a lot of guys are going to look okay here, but I'm not going to totally love it. Might be a situation where I like somebody like Will Barton, but we'll see. Yeah, and we're going to have a lot of likes. I thought so. How has Jokic done in the past against Golden State? Feels like a type of game where he wouldn't play well. Nope. I mean, he had a monster against him last year. <laughs> All right. You know, sort of everybody in play here. Don't want to get carried away on the underside of the game, though. Jokic, 8,800 on FanDuel, 8,100 on DK. Um, I need him to get to 45 or higher, basically. He has not been good in the last two. He's majorly up and down. I don't feel super comfortable focusing in on him, but Denver's got a really good price right now, so... It's hard to just say no. Jamal Murray, 6,800 and 6,300. So you're looking for mid to high 30s. Um, again, boom and bust. Not even boom and bust. He's just been pretty good lately. I'm going to say he's also a 3. I don't love the implied total and the matchup in general against the Warriors. Uh, I think that I'm going to have... A lot of nuggets because of their price. So a lot of Jokic, Murray, Harris, Lyles, Barton. But I don't, and you know Wilson Chandler to a degree. I think that I'm going to have a lot of those guys, but very low exposures. Um, they're just all at really good prices. Gary Harris, 6,300 on FanDuel, 5,900 on DK. He was up in the sevens, wasn't he? No, mid sixes. Maybe Barton's the one that got the seven. Yeah. Wild. What's changed? Let's just mark everybody down now. I know this is ridiculous, but there's just going to be so many possessions. Um, Gary Harris needs low 30s. I need to reevaluate. So, 
out of everybody here, I need to figure out who I would prioritize. And I think it's Gary Harris. Maybe Will Barton. Barton needs, you know, low 30s as well. Uh, maybe it's not Barton. Lyles needs same area. He's been playing so well. Wilson Chandler needs 25. <laughs> Last two games have been atrocious. Three of us, a lot of a lot of atrociousness. Gonna sneeze. Got it. Saved it. Okay. I'm going to say that I like Gary Harris and Trey Lyles the most. I'm fine with Jokic and Murray. And Barton as three. And if you desperately need a small forward to fit in, I'm fine with Wilson Chandler as well. Don't want to be overexposed to anyone in particular because there's no telling against Golden State. Um... But they're a good team to have bits of. And then finally, last game. Clippers hosting the Hawks. Clippers 108.25 implied total. Did I make that up? No, that's just the line. Okay. 108.5 or 108.25 implied total, which is seventh on the night. No Blake. No Austin Rivers. Um, this one's going to be an interesting one other than me saying I assume that I like Lou Williams a lot unless DraftKings got out in front of this and priced Lou Williams up an extra thousand dollars which you know they do from time to time what do we got okay Lou Williams is going to be fine um Tay Dosich is questionable, I think, so something to keep an eye on. I probably won't have any of him. You know, he grades out really well, just from a trust perspective. <laughs> Ugh, I don't like this game at all. Lou Williams, 8,300 on FanDuel, 7,900 on DK. Um, with no Blake, you kind of have to focus on him. He needs, you know, mid 40s, which obviously is not a struggle for him, particularly against the Hawks. <clears throat> not the best defensive team. What are they defensively? Nope, not the one I wanted. League four factors. Hawks are. Yeah, second worst defense in the league. Okay, DeAndre, 8,300 on FanDuel, 78 on DK. He needs mid to low 40s. I don't like it in this scenario. Taya Dosich, again, I, I don't trust it. Um, he grades out really well, particularly on DK, 49. Um, I just can't risk it, unless we know for sure that he's playing. But right now, I believe that he is questionable. Let me double check it. Yeah. Oh, closer to doubtful. Okay. So, in that case, I would say Juwan, if Tay Dosich is out and we get that news before lock, I think Juwan Evans on DK looks pretty good um, at 4100 That's just a really good price. He'll That projection will bump up. But I'm going to avoid Taya Dosic. Uh, Harrell, 4,900 on FanDuel, 4,300 on DK. If we're confident that he's going to get 20-plus minutes, I think you could have a lineup with him. He's not very good, though. Uh, Lou Williams, I never gave a tier. It's probably a two for me, just because of uh, scenario. CJ Williams, 
Wait, did they cut him? Who did they cut? Who did, who did they just cut? Uh, yeah, they waved Jamil Wilson. Got it. Just couldn't remember. Thought I had TJ Williams in there and thought I was supposed to pull his minutes. I totally forgot. But I don't really need any part of CJ Williams or Decker. CJ Williams is at least a tier four guy for me, but other than that, I'm good. Finally, we go to the Hawks. Last game, last team, 104.25 implied total. 13th. Nothing interesting going on with the Hawks. Um, I guess they do look better tonight just because of all of the, the morgue of guys out. We'll look at Schroeder, Prince, Bazemore. To the top. Schroeder, 7,400 on FanDuel, 69 on DK. Did he go down? <laughs> yeah, down from 73 last night. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I like Schroeder there. Not like the Clippers are going to stop him. I, I actually like him as a tier 2 guy. Ilya Sova is at 5,900 on both sides. I'm good. Bazemore, 5,700 and 5,800. Um, I'm okay with it, but he's he's way down the line for me. Prince is 5,900 and 5,600. He needs to get to, let's say, 30. I know that he had a, like a wrist thing last night, maybe. Only played 25 minutes. I'm not going to deal with it. If with it being such a late game. Then John Collins, 5,500 on FanDuel, 5,000 on DK. He's just not, the minutes just aren't there. He has been hyper efficient, but I think that's it. So I'm going to call it. That's every game. And here is the short list. Shrink it down just a little bit. But I know people said my head is usually over top of it. So you should be able to see everything that's there. That's the full list. That's the, that's my, that'll be my player pool. That, so I'll check off everybody and I'll only draw out of that, that bucket. It'll get amended throughout the day. But let's throw this into uh, Cruncher now and see where we pop out. Um, I have a really good feeling about today. I know that sounds so, like, nonsensical, but I really do. I feel good about the things that I like, as weird as that sounds. As most people should. But I'm going to make a big bet on, like, what I liked tonight in a bigger way. Because of that AD and DeRozan thing, I think I have a clear direction. So if it hits, it's a big boom-bust night for me, so it seems. Let's find out. So we'll bump up the randomness. 20 lineups on DK. What do we get? A lot of Levert, which doesn't shock me. So let's look at it like this. I know this is going to be ridiculous. My apologies. So, I want to look at it from a tier perspective. A lot of Levert, he's a tier 2 guy for me. A lot of Dunn, tier 2 guy for me. Taya Dosic, I'm actually going to pull him now. Because I know that I'm not going to roster him. So, a lot of Levert, a lot of Dunn. Both tier 2 guys for me. A lot of Justin Holiday who's a tier 3 guy for me, so he I will limit that. A lot of Boogie, tier 2 guy for me. Um, I would probably 
pivot most of the boogie to AD in these scenarios. So, a lot of Jokic. Um, I dropped him down to three because I don't necessarily trust him against the Warriors, but he's a tier three guy for me. 45% Thon is interesting. Um, I don't like that because it, my projections tend to inflate guys that like play a short amount of minutes like that at minimum salary. They kind of break at the margins. A lot of Tyus Jones, um, who is a three for me. It does make me. It doesn't concern me that I don't see a lot of <clears throat> DeRozan here. He very rarely grades out from an efficiency standpoint, but I would just force him in. <clears throat> um, I would have liked to see more Lou Will. Decent chunk of Rondé Hollis Jefferson. Decent chunk of Dinwiddie, which I like. I think it's going to be fun to build out my DK tonight. We'll check uh, FanDuel first, and then we'll get out of here. I'll be around all day for any questions. Um, like I said, we're going live at 6 tonight. It'll be fun. This one's going to look so much different. A lot of Joe Harris, which doesn't surprise me. At 3,700, that makes total sense. Uh, a lot of Boogie, again, doesn't surprise me. He's got a really good matchup. ton of Curry. Um, you know, salary is depressed on FanDuel. If you're getting Curry under 10K, you know, especially after 11 of 21 from the field, 8 of 16, 15 of 16 from the line, you know, that's a good, good way to look. I don't think Portis gets enough minutes, so I wouldn't want him at 70. But I like Lou Will. I like Mark and Dinwiddie, Dunn. Um, all of that looks good. But uh, I don't think it's too crazy to build around Cousins and Curry on FanDuel. Yeah. I like it. That is it, everybody. I am finished. This is a long one because I got a little rambly as I normally do. Uh, you know, like, subscribe, follow me on Twitter, check out Patreon or PayPal. Uh, projections will be on the website. And I will be back tonight for Locke. 6 o'clock. Adios.